Welcome to City Corner, an ongoing program about what's happening in our city. Hello, I'm Holly Logan, and today we have brought on to the program Arts Commission Chairman Jeff Kissel to talk about the artistic design features planned for the new Dubertel Bridge. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Holly. Yeah, Thanks th for having me. Yeah, great to have you here. Um, can you begin by telling us a little bit about yourself and how you became involved in the Richland Arts Commission? Of course. Uh, so I am a research scientist here in, in the Tri-Cities area. I work for LIGO okay. uh, up on the Hanford Reservation. Uh, and that's what brought me here to the Tri-Cities. I, I moved here for um, a controls engineer position oh, uh, up at LIGO. Um, and shortly after I had arrived here in the Tri-Cities, um, I had tried to find as much uh, artistic outlets as I could in the Tri-Cities and found that while there were some here, there were lots of uh, areas for improvement and mm -hmm. opportunities. So uh, with a friend, I applied for the Richland Arts Commission position, having just heard about it uh, as they had a vacancy. Uh, and I applied, and, and lo and behold, they, they liked me enough to accept me as, as a commission member. Great. So how long have you been on the commission? I've been on the commission for about three years now. Okay. Uh, I have recently, only, only recently this year, become chair. Okay, great. Well, thank you for your service to the city. You're welcome. Uh, can you explain the overall role of the Richland Arts Commission? The Richland Arts Commission is meant to be an extension of the Parks and Public Facilities Department. Mm -hmm. Uh, wherever we can, we assist them and also public works uh, with beautification of the city. Uh, our, our role is not only to improve the city uh, aligned with the city keys of the, of the council um, in both the visual arts and, and the performing arts, um, we, we do what we can uh, within, the, within the power of the city to help them improve their, their artistic adventures or to include art in their, uh, in their adventures throughout the city. Right. I think it's great that the, the city council includes that in the strategic plan. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people who are really passionate about it and having incorporating it into our city is really important. That's great. So, in regards to Dupertel mm -hmm. Corridor, uh, Richland City Manager Cindy Rentz asked the Arts Commission to select artistic design features for the bridge, which is finally coming to fruition. What was the mission statement created by the Commission as it was related to the bridge? So, when Cindy launched the project uh, with us, uh, this was back in February of 2017, uh, she came to the Commission uh, incredibly excited about, about what we could offer. Um, we essentially were given a blank canvas of an already designed uh, structurally uh, uh, bridge mm -hmm. and she, she gave us the mission statement to connect Richland. We, we always have these sub-communities of Richland, whether it be downtown Richland, North Richland, South Richland, um, and this bridge not only physically connects uh, South Richland and downtown Richland, but she wanted us to uh, have the bridge uh, present in an artistic way, uh, connecting all parts of Richland. Sure, which included a lot of elements. What were some of those elements that kind of came to mind r right from the beginning? For the yeah, commission? it was it was actually quite uh, easy for us as as the commission, having been exposed to the city uh, so much that um, the the design motifs that immediately came to mind were uh, the wind, uh, sagebrush the sun, sure. um, nice mountain hillscapes. Um, and in order to limit what we could do uh, within the, the time scale, we wanted to keep it to those, those small uh, motifs. But we think they were emblematic of, of the city. Yeah, that's great. So what elements of the bridge specifically, what's the, what was the overall scope were you asked so to design? So we were actually uh, given a canvas that included the entire Dupertail Bridge corridor. That included a sound wall on the south side of, of the bridge, uh, the sides of the bridge, the pillars of the bridge. There's a, 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 a retaining wall that's beneath the bridge that we were given um, artistic leisure over. Um, so, so we had a lot of canvas to work with. Wonderful, and I've seen some of, just some of the rough concepts um, 
that were put together for the recommendation and they're really beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the Arts Commission also aided in some of the artistic features of two roundabouts also within the Dupertel Corridor. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? So those actually came to the Arts Commission much before the Dupertel Bridge. Um, they are, a and our, our budget for that was uh, a little bit more limited. Uh, so we were restricted to um, off-the-shelf uh, commercial mm -hmm. art, mm -hmm. but our idea for the, um, the I'm not sure if I'm going to get this right, but the, the right and duper tail intersection okay. um, has two objects uh, that we found that were commercially available that harkens to the history of that downtown area of the metalworking and ironworking history, steelworking wow. industry that had happened there. Um, and so that gave us a sense of what materials we could choose from or, or what we wanted to choose from. Um, and then also we enjoyed the, the movement of, of the pieces as well. You have a roundabout where cars are, cars are swirling around it, and so you get that similar sense of movement and an and, and almost wind-like, tornado-like uh, structure around mm -hmm. that roundabout. Um, and the city council was so pleased with that idea, that concept, that they offered us a little bit more budget at the last minute to put in a piece of art in the Thayer uh, duper tail roundabout. And there we, we continued to try and work with this, this uh, metal uh, working theme and found a nice little uh, metal onion-like structure to, to put in the middle. That's cool. Um, I love the idea of incorporating some of the historical elements, and I hadn't known that there was metal working in that area of the city, so that's, that's really interesting. Uh, you mentioned earlier uh, the sound wall on the south side near the Hills Mobile Home Park. Mm -hmm. um, what, can you tell us a little bit more about the design uh, that you're so considering? So for that design, um, it actually, because it's so much canvas, it, it goes from the t tip of the bridge all the way to uh, Queensgate. Um, we wanted to have a lot of the motifs that we were discussing uh, in, in that um, in that wall without making it too busy. So sure. we have our basic material uh, motifs in that bridge where we have uh, river rock, which plays off of what's on the side of the bridge on the opposite side uh, on the 240 bypass. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's at the beginning of the sound wall. And then there are, uh, because the south side of Richland has a lot of newer construction with a lot of basalt materials, we wanted to include um, basalt uh, faux basalt pillars uh, on, on dividing up the sections of the wall. And then behind all of this, the, the, um, the material, we wanted to use concrete textures in order to cr recreate the, the Badger Mountain Hill structure uh, that you would see as you're entering the south side of Richland. Wow, that sounds really cool. So Jeff, can you tell us a little bit more about the members on the Art Commission and some of the experience that they bring? Absolutely. So specifically for the Dupertail Bridge Corridor Beautification, uh, we formed a subcommittee with uh, Franny White and E. Chen Cooper uh, and myself, um, who are um, who were the principal um, the principal commission members that worked on the Dupertail Bridge. Okay. Uh, we also have Michael Woodsky, Thomas Rado, uh, Sonali Mata, and Anne Spillman. Okay. Uh, so we have a wide variety of expertise on that committee. I myself uh, come to the commission with having a background in visual arts and I also play drums. Wow. Um, the um, there are other members who are um, former journalists and technical writers. Uh, there are school teachers um, that teach at WSU. They teach art at WSU. Um, there are fine art collectors. Um, there are members who are actively involved in the performing arts, uh, both with the Richland Players and the, um, uh, the Children's Theater. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a, a, a wide variety of, of both professional and amateur experience in art uh, among, amongst ourselves in the commission. 
That's great. And the diversity in the visual arts, like you were saying, and the performing arts, you better be careful. You might be called to perform at the stage <laughs> with right your with drums. <laughs> so uh, once the, the Arts Commission came together and had these recommendations that you presented to Council, you held an open house Correct. to introduce the design features, and that was held on May 17th at the Community Center. In your opinion, how receptive was the public to the final design recommendation? I think they were, in general, pretty receptive. Um, mm -hmm. We actually had a few of, well, we invited many of the attendees to uh, make a, a, a judgment call that we were still struggling with, which was between the, the base color of the bridge. Oh. Um, and, and with those com conversations, uh, it started um, a bigger conversation about how they enjoyed what we've done. And, and we got um, a vast majority of positive comments. That's great. Did we, um, at that point, with the final design recommendations, did we take input and, and comments and consider beyond the color? Um, um. We had mostly, because of time constraints, mm -hmm. we had to come with a, we had to come to that open house with a mostly complete um, design. Uh, what was left was was a re reasonably straightforward decision that uh, could be made by by the public. Uh, we tried to include as much of what we had heard of the public up to that point, but unfortunately, our 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 time scale uh, was sure. rather limiting. Mm -hmm. Great. So. I know there were some comments from the attendees, uh, maybe some concerns that the design features may trade off on some of the structural elements um, in order to fit within the budget. Can you speak to that a little bit and just clear up maybe some of those misconceptions? Sure. The Richland Arts Commission actually had zero control over the budget uh, of what, what, what is going on with the bridge. What was delivered to us was a bridge that was completely structurally designed and all up to code and met every need uh, as far as um, structure and design was. We, what we were merely given was a, was a blank canvas and we were told that the beautification of the corridor was a part of the original design budget. Mm -hmm. So there really weren't any trade-offs between uh, having any more budget go towards the beautification versus uh, sacrificing it for, for structural intent. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, what are the next steps as, as it relates to the artistic design features being incorporated into the construction? So essentially the design is complete from here. Uh, one of the last things that the Arts Commission subcommittee uh, is responsible for is to have a medallion or a plaque to uh, commemorate the bridge and city council and the members of the uh, architectural designs mm -hmm. team and the construction team. So we are still working actively on the design of that feature. But other than that, the design is essentially complete. It's exciting. Um, I'm told that they'll be breaking ground, hopefully sometime this fall, Very early winter, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll be able to reap the benefits of having the bridge there. Yeah, I can't wait to just drive across the <laughs> I know. <laughs> so can you share with us a, a few other goals that the Arts Commission has for 2017? I know you guys have a work plan and you have several projects that you juggle uh, at your meetings. Can you mention a few of some of the other sure. priorities? Uh, so some of the other priorities for the Richland Arts Commission are to continue to assist uh, staff and public works with new projects that are coming up. Um, in addition to the bridge, uh, to complete the corridor, there will be a few more roundabouts that are on the south side uh, in the Queensgate Keene area. Um, and we're already starting to work with public works staff to try and uh, install some, some art on those pieces. Uh, also, there is potential for us to have a role in a design feature or, or perhaps the entrance way of the new city hall that's going up. That's all on the visual arts perspective. Sure. Uh, we're continuing our efforts to uh, burgeon the performing arts in the community uh, to continue to work with city staff on helping uh, provide um, ideas for the HAPO stage oh, yeah. uh, and also to uh, participate in things like Winter Wonderland that come late in the season. 
so we try and uh, be, well, we, the city asks us to be as involved in their artistic adventures as possible, and we are, we are happy to serve. That's great. I heard recently um, about an effort to replace the Imbarama that was um, stolen in Howard Amon Park. And I know the uh, initial idea was to create kind of a musical plaza, uh, plaza there. Can you give us an update on what's what's happening with that? Absolutely. Uh, through the generosity of the Arts Foundation of Mid-Columbia, they have volunteered as a 501c, uh, 5013c organization to start a campaign, a community campaign, to help crowdfund the replacement for that in Barimba. Uh, the great. budget uh, we're shooting for is um, to cover the original uh, instrumentation and the installation fees for that. So we're shooting for a goal of $10,000, okay. uh, but we would be happy with anything the public would be willing to, sure. to help us out with. That was a really fun uh, grand opening to attend. I was able to be there and it was a very popular amenity to have at Howard Amon. So it was really sad when it came up. Agreed. For such a short yes. time, it made an excellent impact. It really did. So we're, we're hoping to, to raise enough money to not only replace, but eventually get momentum to um, continue the, with the original vision of creating a musical plaza. Right. Great. Uh, one other question I had for you regarding the bridge. Uh, you mentioned a couple of other roundabouts uh, and potentially putting some artwork in them on um, off of Queensgate. Are we, are you able to commission local artists or artists from the Pacific Northwest? You, you said along the Dupertel corridor, some of them are more, uh, you would order commercially. Um. That is the hope eventually. Mm -hmm. um, as we're beginning to, to build a good relationship with city staff mm -hmm. and, and being able to deliver on time and on budget, um, we are working, uh, the city staff is realizing that there's a lot of potential in, in collaboration with the commission. Right, yeah. Um, so they're beginning to earmark a little bit more uh, funding uh, for the projects such that we can help uh, beautify the, the rest of the city. Um, and indeed, um, for those two roundabouts, those two future roundabouts, we are considering a, uh, artist a local artist participation. That's great. That's really exciting. It's always fun to see some of our local artists Agreed. highlighted. Well, that's a good place to end this program. I'd like to take a moment and thank my guest, Jeff Kissel, for talking with us today. If you would like more information about the Dupertel Bridge, or if you have any questions about anything else in regards to our city, the best place to start is the city's website. Thanks again for watching this edition of City Corner. I'm Holly Logan.